Il prezzo del petrolio ha subito un vero e proprio crollo nelle ultime settimane e il mercato si chiede fino a dove potrà arrivare la caduta del prezzo del barile. Mara Edwards, presidente di Canadian Natural Resources, ha dichiarato che i prezzi potrebbero scivolare fino a 30-40 dollari al barile, come capitato nel 2008 per un breve periodo di tempo, prima di recuperare e riportarsi in un'area di equilibrio tra i 70 e i 75 dollari al barile. Drilling Info, una società che raccoglie dati nell'industria petrolifera, ha dichiarato invece a Reuters che nel corso dell'ultimo mese i permessi per la costruzione di nuovi pozzi nelle 12 maggiori aree dove si estrae shale gas sono scesi del 15%. Un primo segnale che la politica dell'OPEC di eh, ridurre i margini dei produttori di shale oil sta avendo affetto? Abbiamo chiesto a Michael Hewson, Chief Market Analyst di CMC Market, che cosa pensa del mercato del petrolio e se e a che livello vede un limite, un floor, per i prezzi dell'oro nero. Murray Edwards, uh, the chairman of Canadian Natural Resources, said that oil prices could uh, slide towards $30-$40 dollars per barrel, as it happened mm -hmm. in 2008, before bouncing back to an equilibrium price between $70 and $75. Do you share this view, and which should be the trigger of uh, this slide? Well, actually, I don't share that view. I mean, yes, I mean, we did see a slide back to $30-$40, a barrel in 2008 but um, you know we saw an equally significant bounce back after that looking at the oil price I think there's an awful lot of people who are bearish on it at the moment there's no one actually um, bullish on it and that makes me a little bit cautious because I think when everyone is talking um, an asset price down to a particular level that's sometimes when it's probably time to call a base now we saw a significant rebound yesterday Um, an awful lot of volatility yesterday, but we, we, we definitely saw a significant rebound. What I would say is that over the course of the next, say, six to nine months, the average level of the oil price is probably going to be an awful lot lower than it was, say, six months ago. And that's for the simple reason that OPEC, I think, is losing its ability to control The, the supply and demand curve for global oil production. And why do I say that? I say that simply because U.S. shale oil has completely changed the supply and demand dynamics of global oil prices. The U.S. used to be a significant importer of crude oil. That's no longer the case. Therefore, that oil that it used to import has to go elsewhere. Now, unless there's a significant pickup in demand from elsewhere, and by that I mean from countries like Japan, China, and Europe, then you're going to have a significant oversupply problem. And that's what you're seeing play out at the moment. Basically, OPEC is still pumping 30 million, dollars, 30 million barrels a day. U.S. shale is obviously producing quite a significant amount of oil for itself. And, and that's driving the oil price lower because global demand for oil remains weak. It does have a positive effect, though, these lower oil prices, and that actually could help Europe out. And that is lower oil prices mean lower fuel prices at the petrol pumps, which should in turn put more money in consumers' pockets. So certainly lower oil prices for consumers are a good thing because it gives them potentially a little bit more extra disposable income rather than paying out for fuel costs. And that in itself actually could help the European economy, the Italian economy, the German economy recover over the course of the next few months. Now, that in itself presents the European Central Bank a bit of a problem because obviously lower oil prices are deflationary. But I don't think the ECB should fight that. There is good deflation and there's bad deflation. And I think what the ECB needs to think about when it meets not only this month, but also in subsequent months, is that a falling oil price is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. And at some point, the oil price will bounce back. But I certainly think the equilibrium level for oil price is now an awful lot lower than it was, say, six months ago. 
Okay. And yesterday uh, we read a news uh, launched by Reuters that uh, Drilling Info, which is an industry data firm, uh, told that uh, new permits for new wells uh, in uh, shale countries uh, dropped 15% across uh, uh, these uh, 12 major shale formations last month. And uh, mm. is OPEC uh, near to achieve its uh, goal, which is uh, to put difficulties uh, to the producer of shale oils? Well, you're asking me, is does a does a lower oil price give difficulties to U.S. shale producers? Is that the question? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, it does. I mean, obviously, a lower oil price does put pressure on U.S. shale producers, but um, I think OPEC is potentially overestimating the effect that that could have on U.S. shale producers. I think if you look at, say, some of the shale producers in North Dakota and, and in Texas, you're going to need an oil price of around about $55 a barrel before some of those wells become economic. If you then flip that round and actually look at, say, some of the OPEC producers, they're already suffering the effects of a lower oil price because their break-even price, when you, when you factor in all the subsidies that these countries give to um, their population is around $100 a barrel. So I would suggest that the stakes are an awful lot higher for OPEC countries than they are for shale countries. And I think if OPEC is looking to try and squeeze these shale producers, I think they might have to wait an awful long time. And I certainly think that some of those countries who have a break-even price of $100 a barrel don't have that amount of time. Can we consider these uh, 55 50 dollars and a barrel uh, a bottom for the market? I think so. Yes, I think you, you know. I mean, the Rosneft CEO Igor Sekin suggested that uh, oil prices could go as low as 60 dollars a barrel or 55 dollars a barrel. Um, it, you know, in the first part of next year, I certainly think that's feasible. I, I would be very surprised if we see it. Um, um, over the course of the next couple of weeks, but I certainly think it's potentially feasible maybe over the next two or three months. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. 